Hi, this is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto, and welcome to my VVV beta graphics tutorial. So in our previous tutorial, we learned the basics of how to use uh, superphysical, like tweaking with material and things like that. And in today's tutorial, we're going to learn about lighting, so how to make the scene look better. So yeah, let's get started with that. Um, so what we're trying to achieve today is sort of like studio lighting setup uh, and something like these. So we have, we s simulate sort of like a uh, reflection stage and then we try to like locate the lights the right direction to the light location to make it sort of look like it's the, the object are shot inside studio or like things like these. So to do this one, uh, for like this one, there's like a, like this typical method to use, and that's basically these. So we have one key light here from the right, and then fill light from the left, and one background light on the back. So it's not only one light, but since we have with having multiple lights, you can sort of like make the subject look softer or sometimes maybe sharper like with these ones they have different light colors or like this one if you uh, point the blue light from the right and then the red light as a field light and then I'm not sure if they have background light but I mean with this method you can like tweak it and make it look your graphics look a little bit better I started doing that with my recent uh, post like this one that I made is the was the first one that I made out of this lighting method and looks really really different than the ones that I used to do like these ones so with this one I was still playing around it looks okay but this one looks more like it's there and it that's because of the lighting so I wanted to share that uh, to everyone like this one as well so to do so today we're using this super physical again uh, this one is by uh, ton film uh, so thanks to him uh, so please download this and put it in your packs folder and i have this uh, pinterest uh, image as a reference just open so that i can go back and see if i'm doing things right and this is sort of like the mock-up that i already made but it doesn't look as like i want so i'll just delete this one for now Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so first of all, what we'll have to do, as last time, uh, same as last time, we go to the packs folder, and then we press super physical, and then we go to nodes, modules, and inside here, there's this help patch called super physical. So not with the one deferred, but this one, we open it up. And once we open this, we already sort of have a really nice looking scene. It takes a bit of time to open it up. But in default, this is how it looks like. Okay. So this is already quite rich. I mean, the look is already good. But if you tweak with the lighting, it makes it look way more better. So I'll share how to do that. So first of all, I want to change this teapot to uh, studio so in default inside super physical assets there should be studio fvx file so uh, right click here the file name and then double press studio right now we have studio but I think the rotation and everything is weird so it's the first geometry so change this one to zero or no oh, yeah minus 0 0.5 and then I'll scale this one up to two and then I'll move the Z axis a little bit. Okay, this looks better. And then I don't need this floor because I have the studio. So I'm going to change this box to a sphere. And then increase the resolution uh, to 60. Then I get it smoother. Uh, I think this one is also in a weird location. So I'll make the Y axis a little bit higher. And I'll scale a little bit down, lower. Put it down. Okay, with this I can sort of like start tweaking with it. Uh, I don't like the fact that these boxes are too close, so I'll just move this one to right and left. Uh, also, uh, make sure that you turn off the materials because right now it's not really important to have materials. I mean, it's quite noisy to have it on, so I'll turn these. So this one is the material. Go to the right and right click these will enable 
the materials okay so I have this one deleted uh, also oh I forgot in material uh, make sure that you have the roughness to one uh, maybe zero, uh, 0 0.8 and then metallicness to zero because I don't need this for now uh, make sure everything else is turned off because I don't need any material thing and I'm Darker, so right click and lower down the V, something like here. Okay, so once I'm done with it, I'll just hide this and also I'll make. Oh, okay, so this is it for the setup. And one more thing, uh, I need to turn on the light helper. So right now it's in default, it's off. So I'll, I'll left click, middle click, and make this toggle on. And then I'll right click this. So now I can see that there's three lights located here, right? The first one is the uh, no, there's a spotlight and then there's point light and then there should be a directional light but there's nowhere in. okay so once this is done once the light helper is on um, right click the light setup and then this is what should pop up so these are all the lighting setup and we're not gonna use the point light and spotlight for today so just disconnect these and disconnecting these will look like this if I disconnect the directional setup it will be totally dark so it means there's no light in the scene but I will be using the directional light so so I'll use this one spotlight and point light I mean later on maybe you can turn it on but right now we don't need it so okay and then right click directional lights directional setup okay so this is what you should see so these are all the setup for the directional light uh, so the reason why we didn't see the helper for directional light is because it, the helper was off so we have to turn this on. So right now we see these boxes, right? So directional light is sort of like a straight light. There's, it's not like a, how do you say? It's, it works more like as an uh, area light. So there's no like a fog for this light, which means it's quite useful when you're doing sort of like studio setup. Um, okay, so this is basically what we're using. Uh, so first of all, let's try setting up the key light. So the right, the one that should be on the right bottom of the subject. To do so, what we will do is we'll just tweak with the pitch and yaw. So right now, I don't need the, any angle for the pitch, so I'll put it to zero, and then turn the yaw to the right. Okay, this should be somewhere close, and I'll make sure that the scale is lowered down because I don't want it to be sort of like a beam light. So I'll just make sure that it's lowered down, a little bit higher maybe. Okay, and then, uh, so this is, will be our first light on the right. And then what we'll be doing next is we need two more lights, fill lights and background light, but in default you can't do that. To do so, we need to spread each of them. So we'll be spreading the yolf and uh, what we do do is control i and then get the inspector and then press control t and pressing control t allows you to stick the inspector on the front so that whenever you click here it still stays here so click yo and then go to uh slice count mode change this one to calls roll pages and then make columns to three and then uh, make sure that you have this show grid thing on. Right click here. Uh, once it's done, you should see something like this. So it's it's spreadable. So these are lights, lights are spreadable. So once this is done, I'll just put the second light to the place where I want. So this will be the fill light. And then the third light at the back, which will be the back light. Okay, so I'm already getting three lights located here, right? Okay, this looks better. Mm -hmm. So I'll do the same thing to the others as well. So first of all, I will need uh, uh, intersect will be a little bit higher actually. And then uh, I think I'll spread the distance. So do the same thing here, colors roll. And for these values, I'll just increase the rows instead of columns, so three, and then I'll scale this one up. And then I'll do the same thing to the others. So I'll make sure that I enable 
is spread as well so I have three buttons so that I can make sure whenever I turn it off and on I can see like which light is affecting what and then I'll spread the intensity as well if I change this one to three and then I'll also spread the diffuse color to three okay I think I'm done and just in case I'll just I'll do the same thing too pitch as well. So three columns for this one and the show grid. Okay, once you're done, uh, press Ctrl T and Info Spectre will be hidden in the back. Okay, uh, so what we'll, be, what we'll be doing next is it's not shown in this image, but basically in default, like fill light is something that affects like softer than the main light. Like for example, in this image, you see the blue light from the main light affecting more than the fill red light right so i want this fill light to be a bit behind and then this main light to be a bit closer to do so what i would do is i'll change distance and the intensity so i want the main light to be more brighter so i'll turn this one to two and then i'll increase the second light to something around 1.27 then i also change the distance a little bit Okay, and then usually the backlight is the strongest one and what this one does is it creates this highlight like as you see this part is already the backlight effect so if I change the yaw of this you see that it's sort of like showing up the edge and if you go and check like different portrait photos shot in studios it creates this really interesting effects at the edge of the left side like here I think this one is already using the same thing or maybe yeah it's using the reflector but it sort of like blends or makes a highlight so that you don't really see the edge and that's what backlights does so I'll turn this one on with the intensity a little bit higher and then I want this distance to be a little bit further so that it makes a little bit softer light okay I think we're getting close Okay, so this was the basic setup for if you turn one of them off, like for example, so this one is the main light, this one is what the second light is doing, and this effect is from the backlight. Okay, so we're getting really, really close, close now. So what I would do next is I'll add some colors to this light. In default, it's white, but I'll change the first main light, for example, red. And then the second light to let's just say blue and I will uh, leave the third light as white okay we're already kind of like getting similar result to what we just saw in the previous image like this one oh but it's different I'll change this one to blue and then I'll change this one to red okay so this one is already sort of like getting a really similar result uh, maybe the stage right at the back is getting too much shadows here, so I'll increase the pitch a little bit. Oh, so you're the one affecting. Yeah, I think the backlight right now is a bit too strong. Where is he? Oh, it's quite far away. Then I'll turn on the intensity a little bit. Uh, still I'm not getting the best result uh, I think I'll have to spread the range I think this guy is affecting too much from the back of the stage, so make this one a little bit smaller and then put it a bit closer so that it's inside the stage okay now I can see that this uh, stage geometry has less shadows so try try to make uh, try to play with it and find out the best value uh, to cast less shadow on your geometry so just play around with these values and try to make a better look oh increasing this looks really nice uh, I 
I'll change this color to something more natural. Yeah, this looks better. So yeah, I think I'm getting really, really close. So like with only one light, this is how it's gonna look like. I mean, this is already quite rich, but if you have the right setup with your lights, it can really, really make it look gorgeous. Okay, I think I'm good with this. So yeah, like like a studio setup, I mean, it's basically set up to make it look good from one perspective. So if I look this one from the back, it actually looks pretty weird. But if I look from the front, it looks really, really nicely colored, right? So yeah, this is basically what I wanted to share for today. And uh, once you're done setting this up, you can tweak a lot with the colors and make it look dif different. For example, if you go to material and here, this is the background color. So if you lower this down, you can actually sort of like make it look darker. You can actually change the color of the ambient. So make the entire scene look a little bit bluish. I'll just keep this one, that's great. Um, yeah, and then also uh, you can apply volume to it. Uh, I'll just turn this one on. This also makes it look way more richer. Right now, I think the volume is too strong, so I'll lower down this fade, fade Z amount and then turn this one on. Light helper, okay? So, this was the result for today. It looks really, really good and. I didn't know, I never thought of doing this real lighting method inside VVV, but once you get this done, it really, really makes your scene gorgeous. So I hope this helps. Um, yeah, that was it for today and thanks for watching. In our next tutorial, we're going to learn how to make it easy, how to make, tweak this patch and make it easily, make it easy to implement inside your other patches. So. Yeah, that was it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.